Hey everyone, CW Music here. I'm CWD, and this is going to be the video where I do my top 50 favorite albums of 2017. Last year I did 60. I'm not going to torture myself like that again, so I'm going to do 50 instead. I also want to go ahead and get out of the way. Yes, the channel is going to come back this year. I know I said that last year, and we did reviews for about three months, and then it dissipated, and there was barely any activity on the channel. But 2018 is going to be different. I assure you it's going to be different. I'm finding more motivation as of late. I'm finding myself able to establish a routine this time around, and I'm just really excited for what 2018 is going to have in store for the future, for the channel, for me, for music, and I'm going to be glad that I'm going to be going to be actively doing what I love doing again, despite any kind of interference. Now, a few things I want to get out of the way before I start embarking on this list. One, and first and foremost, it's not completely definitive. I've got it down to approximately which albums I like more than others. So I'm not going to spend like forever trying to figure out definitively which ones I like more than others. Since even if I did do that, I'm pretty sure years later my preferences and certain albums will end up changing and all that. So we'll see how this goes. Secondly, if there are any albums that are on this list that you don't like, or if there's albums that aren't on here that you liked, keep note that this list is purely subjective for the most part. And if I didn't list an album on this list, I either didn't hear it, didn't care for it enough, or I did like it, and I like it quite a bit, but either I heard it too late and I just didn't want to like go through the frustration of trying to work it into the list or I just didn't like it enough in comparison to what all is on this list in particular. Third, there's going to be the NERD album that's going to be on this list. No One Ever Really Dies, the album that dropped a few weeks ago. That review is going to be coming early next year. I'm definitely in the brainstorming phases of getting that one out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this list on the road. I'm going to breeze through 50 through 26, so that way I can go into more details with the albums that I feel like were bigger highlights for the year than these in particular, but that's not to take away the quality and the vitalness, if that's even a word, of these records. At number 50, we have Arcade Fire's Everything Now, not one of their best they've ever put out, but Still a definitely a polarizing and interesting listen there from the legendary indie rock outfit. At number 49 we have Charlotte Gainsbourg with Rest. A really good and sultry dream pop record if you're looking for something like that. 48 Thundercat creates a very incohesive yet stylistically interesting album with the album Drunk. At number 47, Fever Ray returns after almost a decade of no new music with the album Plunge. Definitely worth checking into if you love idiosyncratic and androgynous electronic music. At number 46, The War on Drugs get a lot more progressive and a lot more dreamier and at times kind of visceral with their latest album, A Deeper Understanding. At number 45, Foxygen come back stylistically after and star power with the album Hang. At number 44, A.B. Tear of Animal Collective puts out an hour's worth of trippy, psychedelic folk music with the album Eucalyptus. At number 43, Rhapsody delivers a hard-hitting and at times particularly sensual rap record with her album Layla's Wisdom. At number 42, Roger Waters puts out one of the best comeback records of the year with the political and progressive Is This the Life We Really Want. At number 41, Perfume Genius puts out a beautifully produced album with the album No Shape. Definitely an album you want to look into if you're into art pop, art rock, experimental rock, and indie rock for sure. At number 40, The XX get a little more vibrant with their latest record, I See You. At number 39, Grizzly Bear put out an album that is similar to Shields, the album they put out previously to this one, but still particularly solid and definitely worth listening if you're a lover of Grizzly Bear and if you're a lover of indie rock. 
I'm talking about Painted Ruin. Number 38, Full of Hell put out their most refined and visceral album to date as Full of Hell with the album Trumpeting Ecstasy. And number 37, Proto Martyr get even more abstract and even more hard hitting at points with the album Relatives of Descent. And number 36, Code Orange with the help of Kurt Blue once again delivers a interesting and standalone effort in sludgecore music with the album Forever. And number 35, Joey Badass refines his pop sensibilities and gets a lot more political with his latest album All American Badass. And number 34, Sampha finally puts out his debut album and it's a definitely an emotionally potent journey there with his latest album Process. And number 33, Blank Mass, one half of Fuck Buttons, puts out his latest record and it is one of the most noisiest visceral and in-your-face electronic albums I've heard this year with the album World Eater. And number 32, Dirty Projectors put out their first new album in a little while, about half a decade, with their self-titled record. They definitely reinvented themselves with this one, seeing as David Longstreet is just by himself with this effort. And number 31, Spoon put out a new record, adding on to their consistent discography with the album Hot Thoughts. At number 30, Boris put out an album that is quintessentially Boris, more on the doom and sludge metal side with their album Deer. At number 29, SZA puts out her debut album and it's a sensual, definitely thought-provoking and sort of controversial record there in terms of being the other woman with her album Control. At number 28, The Flaming Lips put out their most ambient driven one of their trippiest records to date with their album Oxy Melody. At number 27, Jlin puts out her sophomore record and it is easily the best footwork album that has been put out this year with her album Black Origami. And at number 26, Laura Marling makes me a fan of her work with the intimate and vulnerable record Simper Femina. Definitely an album that in terms of the lyrics makes a lot more sense what with the Me Too movement that erupted a few months ago. 25 is the latest and third full length album from electronic producer Arca with his self titled record. Arca has definitely found his own sound at this point whereas where Mutant and Zen were just him exploring all these ideas Arca finally hits on something and all I had to do was start singing, which is pretty interesting. So if you are looking for a very eerie and idiosyncratic electronic record, definitely check this record out. At number 24, we have the latest album from Chelsea Wolfe, His Spun. Easily her heaviest release to date. Easily the heaviest album she's ever put out. It's her first album that I can definitely say and declare that she be a, a metal artist at this point. So if you are looking for a gothic, noisy, sludgy record with some of the most eerie and haunting vocals you will ever hear, definitely check this album out. And number 23, Colella finally puts out her debut album, Take Me Apart. A gorgeous, gorgeous record there. Definitely on the sensual side about all the lessons learned and kind of trying to find some kind of emotional equilibrium when it comes to romance and lust and all that. It did initially disappoint me that the album wasn't weird considering the fact that she's worked with Arca before, but the album is without a doubt beautiful and definitely a tad experimental in its own right. At number 22, Jay-Z comes back stylistically with his re latest record, 444. It's probably the most intimate and vulnerable we've heard from Jay-Z in a while and he's got a lot to say within the less than 40 minutes this album runs. Add to that, No ID is on production throughout this entire record and if you're looking for a solid Jay-Z project, if you're a hip-hop fan that is looking for a solid hip-hop project, then definitely check this album out. And number 21, Full of Hell and the Body collaborate once again for Another record that is somehow better than their last one, Ascending a Mountain of Light. They are pushing the boundaries with metallic and noise music, and they are finding a lot of artistic creativities and 
definitely finding new avenues within this sort of chaos and viscera that they have decided to play around with instead of just indulge in. So definitely check that out if you're a metal fan, if you're a noise fan, you'll definitely love this thing. And number 20, we have the new album from Quelle Chris, Being You is Great, I Wish I Could Be You More Often. A sort of hip-hop record that talks about dissociation as if this dissociation gets to the point where this is a whole other human being that you have no choice but to kind of interact with and sort of be with in that regard. Instead of seeing that this other person that is so great is also you, that's that the production here definitely sort of on the lo-fi jazzy side a lot of moments it's definitely a highlight for hip-hop this year if you have not checked this album out at number 19 a lot of people have been leaving this album off of the list considering the fact that their frontman Jesse Lacey has a lot of demons that he now has to confront and deal with that from his past instead of keeping it hidden away and denying it and I kind of understand their political stance there with, with their making their lists, but I still love this record quite a bit, even after hearing about what Jesse Lacey has done. I don't think what Jesse has done is reflective of the quality of this record. I'm talking about the new album from Brand New, Science Fiction. I've been waiting for this record for a long, long time, ever since I became a fan of their work, and I'm glad that they finally put out a new album, and from what I understand, it's also going to be their last record, seeing as they're going to be finished touring and being abandoned next year, and we are left with the last album, the final hurrah of one of the better, most hardcore bands and sort of emo bands that the 2000s have birthed, for sure. At number 18, we have Run the Jewels with RTJ3. I know this album came out really, really late last year, but the record technically was supposed to come out in January, and it did come out physically on January, so I'm going to be including it in this list for 2017 on that basis. Run the Jewels are refining their sound. They are definitely finding a lot of ways to still remain hard-hitting and have a lot to say in terms of politics and the social landscape and all that. Add to that, Run the Jewels are still also finding ways to stay hard-hitting and definitely hyperbolize that they are the shit throughout the entire record. So if you are looking for a hard-hitting hip-hop record that takes no prisoners whatsoever, definitely give this a try for sure. At number 17, we have an album that took me by surprise when I first heard it and kept listening to it for a long duration of time, Julian Baker's Turn Out the Lights. It's an emotionally potent record there. It's definitely setting the stage for a lot of what she is going through as a person or what I can only understand is what she's going through as a person. There is definitely reason for the hype in the indie community if you have not listened to this record yet. There's not really a whole lot in terms of like big showy performance on this record. It's her voice, a guitar, piano, and occasionally some strings in the background and she talks about depression and it's beautiful the way she words all of her lyrics on this record. And number 16, NERD come back with their latest record, No One Ever Really Dies. This album is, in my opinion, like one of the best of the year for sure. And That's kind of redundant to say since it's on this list, but when I first heard this album, I was amazed by how well the album went, apart from like maybe a couple tracks. The guests on this album are great, even Future is great on this record. The production is fantastic and I definitely dig a lot of Pharrell's rapping and singing. His overall delivery all across this record. It's a definitely an intricate album in its own right and one you need to pay attention to as 2017 is coming to a close. At number 15 we have what is in my opinion the champion of Brain Feeder Records right now. Igloo Ghost with his latest record, Neo Wax Bloom. This album is 
probably going to be the weirdest electronic album you're going to hear this year, and it's easily one of the most hard-hitting and intricate you're ever going to hear this year. This is, without a doubt, one of the most vital and must-hear electronic records of the year if you have not given this a try yet. Do give this a try. There is a lot of promise within Igloo Ghost as he is going to be continuing making music and I hope it's going to be remain this experimental, this indulgent, and this intricate and focused for sure. At number 14, Flea Foxes come back with their latest record, Crack Up, and it definitely tells me exactly why a Flea Foxes record was something that the music world has missed. Lots of beautifully constructed progressive folk there about self-doubt. And if you're a Flea Foxes fan and this somehow slipped under your radar, if you're an indie folk band, a folk rock band, and this somehow slipped under your radar, don't let this slip by you because this is definitely a promising return for one of the best folk bands that has ever came out ever. And number 13, Kendrick Lamar comes out with his latest record, DAMN! Definitely a jagged and abstract record from Kendrick for sure in terms of stylistic cohesiveness. If you have not listened to this record, give us a try. If you have not actually listened to this backwards, if you haven't listened to the Collector's Edition yet, definitely give that a try too. The album really does work forwards and backwards. Add to that, Kendrick has a lot to say about his own emotions when it comes to the end of the world and where he stands with spirituality and the music community as well as the black community and all that. Definitely give this a try. It is a must hear for hip hop if you have not listened to this yet. Number 12 we have the latest album from Mountain Goats, Goths. John Durneal is definitely improving, improving, improving with his conceptuality and his lyrical nuance with this record. He's pretty much a master at that at this point and the lyrics on this album are pretty much perfect. Add to that, I definitely dig the avenues that they were able to explore with this being the first album in Mountain Goat's history that did not feature electric guitar. So if you are looking for a interesting Baroque pop, indie folk, indie rock record that has a lot to say in terms of like living a gothic lifestyle and a lot about gothic culture and sort of living in a sort of fantasy that definitely give this album a try. At number 11, we have the latest album from Converge, The Dusk in Us. This is definitely, without a doubt, my favorite metal album of the year. I'm going to be considering it a metal album, even though I know Converge have, as a band, blurred the lines between hardcore, noise, and metal with the release of all their records leading up to this point. And it's a Converge album, you know. They are a consistent and fantastic metalcore, mathcore band, and they proved their consistency with this record, and I'm definitely pleased that it came out this way. Now we reach the top 10 favorite albums of this year. At number 10, we have the latest album from Queens of the Stone Age, Villains. This is an album that, while I don't necessarily love more than Like Clockwork, this is a swaggerish and upfront and in-your-face rock record that you absolutely need to listen to. A lot of people were disappointed with the choice and producer of Mark Ronson, but I don't really see why at all. I, I definitely believe that Mark Ronson adds quite a bit of flavor to this sort of glam rockish dance punk type of vibe that Queens of the Stone Age were going for on this record and yeah definitely check this out if you're a Queens of the Stone Age fan if you like this sort of hard hitting and danceable and definitely swaggerish rock music. At number nine we have the latest album from Perurient, Rainbow Mirror. This album is three and a half hours long and I somehow was able to get through reviewing it. The album itself delves into a lot of experimentation within the dark ambient drone noise sort of genre that Perorian himself has become a big figurehead in. And it is, without a doubt, my favorite electronic album of the year, considering how eerie and haunting the whole record is. A couple tracks here and there I didn't really care all that much for, but 
the whole bulk of the album is fantastic. And if you are looking for a fantastic dark ambient noise record, then definitely give this album a try. At number eight, we have the comeback record from LCD Sound System, American Dream. This album is everything I've always wanted from a comeback record from LCD Sound System. A sort of mixture of post-punkish IDM and EDM music mixed in with all these different ventures and all this different sound. This year was definitely the year for LCD Sound System, not just in terms of putting out an album, but having a live presence that people are going to want to go to if they are into a sort of electronic jam band type thing, if they are into a sort of post-punkish and alternative rock type thing. I'm glad LCD Sound System are back, and I'm glad this record turned out as great as it did. And if you are looking for a unique post-punk or IDM type sound, then definitely give this album a try. At number seven, we have the new latest album from St. Vincent, Mass Seduction. This album, once again, took me by surprise, and I'm definitely pleased with how it turned out. With this album, I feel like I'm getting more and more of, of who St. Vincent is as an artist and as a person. And she definitely is able to indulge in a lot of variety and indulge in a lot of experimentation with this record. And she's definitely hitting home with a lot of the dystopian themes that appeared on her previous record. And with this record, it feels a lot more real than one would expect it to be, and I'm definitely pleased with how the album turned out. At number six, we have the first of five albums from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, Flying Microtonal Banana. I did not hear the new one that just dropped yesterday, so I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing that yet. But this album, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, are proving that they are a band to watch in terms of rock music this year alone where they pretty much take all their instruments and micro-tune them and they have opened up a lot of avenues for what could be possible in psychedelic rock, acid rock, and experimental rock and jam band stuff for sure since they are a jamish band. King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard are in my opinion the band of the year considering the fact that they have not gone silent for too long and they have gifted us five albums that, while they're not all great, this one's definitely great. While they're not all great, they're definitely solid and great helpings of one of the most interesting rock bands of this decade. At number five, we have one of the most depressing albums of the year, and an album that was very difficult for me to review at the time I did get a chance to review it. This album reevaluates what it means to feel grief. This album, without a doubt, makes you rethink what death is. And I'm going to be returning to this as often as I can, even though this album is crushing emotionally. I'm talking about the Mount Erie album, A Crow Looked at Me. This album. I did a whole review of this, and if you want to know more about like the backstory behind this record, you can watch that review, or just do your own research, but this album makes me very worried about Phil Elverum, and very concerned as to where his mind is, but it sounds like that if what he delivered in the record is reflective of his mindset, I'm definitely sure that he has moved on for the most part from this, but I'm definitely, you know, one of the fans that are looking out for Phil and hoping he's doing well, and I hope that more people give this album a try and give this album numerous tries, because it definitely is a picture of what grief actually looks like, and I hope more people visit this record and in the future. At number four we have the Bjork album that is in my opinion Bjork's best album to date. I'm talking about Utopia. Definitely her longest record to date and her most indulgent and progressive and 
sort of hard hating in a certain way and definitely intricate and beautiful record she has ever put out. I know I'm gonna be alone on that since a lot of people think Homogenic is the greatest record she's ever put out. Some people think it's Vespertine, some people think it's Post, but this one I definitely feel like is gonna go down as the greatest record Bjork has ever put out given the fact that it's just so dense, it's so conceptually intricate. It's without a doubt a reason why Bjork and Ark are working together is gonna turn out more rewarding music than it's not going to, if that makes any sense. So if you are interested in Bjork, this is a definitely a record you want to look into if you're into sort of electronic music that also has a classical and folky edge to it. Definitely give this album a try. At number three, we have my favorite hip-hop album of the year. I'm flabbergasted by how great this album is. This is coming from an artist that I never figured would have ever put out a great album ever. And this album is his most vulnerable to date. It is without a doubt his most gorgeous and in terms of the production instrumentals, definitely an intricate and sort of trippy record for sure for hip-hop music. And this guy is, without a doubt, going through some things as he is coming forward with who he is sort of coming out is going to mean for him and, and mean for his sort of mental health for sure. I'm talking about the latest album from Tyler the Creator, Scumfuck Flower Boy, aka Flower Boy. The album itself is a huge surprise for me and a huge surprise from Tyler and I'm definitely pleased with how this record turned out. When I first heard this record I was taken aback by how great it was and I couldn't believe that I was actually hearing what I was hearing in terms of the musical execution for sure. If you are a hip-hop fan that is looking for a sort of vulnerable record, if you're looking for an, an album that feels like one long multi-part suite instead of like a hip-hop album with like different tracks in it then definitely check this album out it's without a doubt my favorite hip-hop record of the year and in my opinion the best hip-hop has had to offer and number two this is a band that is the ideal and quintessential protest band for the time to come for sure these guys have definitely laid their mark when it comes to making protest music, when it comes to making music that not only is definitely politically and socially aware, but also still f keeping it artistic, keeping it musically focused for sure. This is definitely a band that you need to pay attention to if you're someone that's like, oh, there's no great protest music out there. There's no protest music in the year 2017. There's no protest music. There's nothing that's politically self-aware and da 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 da. I'm talking about the latest album from Algiers, The Underside of Power. This album blew their debut right out of the water and I'm gonna be very fascinated with where all two years are going to go next. Considering the fact that the album is as great as it is, considering the fact that the album definitely shows a lot of evolution for everybody involved and all Gears, in my opinion, are one of the single most innovative rock bands, one of the single most innovative bands of this decade and I'm in love with everything they're doing right now and I'm going to be excited for their new album whenever that ends up coming out. And finally, number one, for those that probably have watched the channel for the few reviews that did come out, this is probably going to be a not a big surprise to you. I'm definitely very pleased with how the record came out. I was definitely very interested and very hyped up for when I first heard the title track to the album, the lead single to the album. And what he does in terms of lyrics is take his satirical approach to lyrics and concept and aims at a bigger target. He aims at 
the human condition and where humanity is going for the rest of humanity's existence. He takes all that and points out how ridiculous it is that humans value themselves so much that they don't realize that their extinction is not going to mean that much in on a universal scale. Sure, there's a sort of culture that is worth preserving in terms of the human race. But if that gets wiped out, then what's the big deal? What is so important about the sustainability and the existence of the human race when it comes to just life happening? Life does not end when a species goes extinct. Add to that, the instrumentals are, without a doubt, some of the best he's ever done. It's definitely an album that proves to me that he is a master and one of the people that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his contemporaries and his influences when it comes to making piano rock and folk rock and indie rock and definitely is an album that exemplifies what the year 2017 has been on a much larger scale than just music I'm talking about the latest album from Father John Misty, Pure Comedy. Definitely an album that I was hoping would be great, and as it turns out it was. I ended up giving this album my first perfect score for the channel, and miraculously enough, I like that album a lot more. And I'm not sure where Father John Misty is going to go, but I'm definitely excited for what could possibly come from one of the greatest singer-songwriters of this millennium. And that does it, guys. That is my favorite albums of the year list. Done, done, and done. Happy New Year to everybody. I am excited for what 2018 is going to have to offer, and I'm definitely going to be very intrigued with what bands are going to be touring and all that. What sort of artists and bands are going to be doing festivals and shows next year because I'm already going to go see Fleet Foxes and Parliament Funkadelic next year and I'm definitely intrigued with all the ones I'm going to be seeing. I'm going to be definitely going to try to bring concert reviews back. That's something I have put on the back burner as well and going to try to work in that along with reviews for sure. And the channel is just going to be stronger than ever and I'm definitely excited for that. But anyway, if you've given any of these 50 albums a listen, what did you think of any of them? Did you like any of them? Did you dislike any of them? What were some albums you thought I ranked too high? What were some I ranked too low? Or some albums that you feel that deserve a placement in lists? And what were your favorite albums of the year? Drop some of them down in the comments. Drop however many your list is, and I will definitely get back to you and look at your list for sure. And what are albums that you are going to be excited for come 2018? What are some that you think I should check out as reviews are going to be back and up and running next year? This is CWD Music here, signing off.